Hello and welcome to this lesson on a motion in a straight line, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how you can calculate the motion when an object undergoes constant acceleration. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to distinguish between U and V, calculate the displacement of an object moving with uniform acceleration, and explain what else we need to know to calculate an acceleration object if we know its displacement in a given time. So in this this lesson we're going to look at the following part of the AQA A level physics specification 3.4.1.3 motion along a straight line. Now the following quantities can be used to determine the uh, motion of an object mathematically and can be measured experimentally. So the first one is the displacement which is given the symbol s which is how far an object travels from its starting point in a given direction. You then have velocity both the initial u and the final v which is the rate of change of an object's displacement, the acceleration, which is given the symbol A, which is the rate of change of an object's velocity, and time taken T, which is the time in which the object is in motion. So we have our um, five different quantities, displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. Now we can place these different measurable factors into different equations to fully describe the motion of an object. Now we call these equations the equations of motion or the SUVAT equations. Now the SUVAT equations can be used to work out the values of an object moving when the object is moving with a constant acceleration. Now constant acceleration can always be called uniform acceleration as well. So these equations involve motion in a straight line at a constant acceleration. Now you should always remember that an object achieves constant acceleration when it has a constant resultant force acting on it. Now the most common example of constant acceleration is when an object has fallen freely under gravity. Now remember as well, near the Earth's surface, an object falling freely under gravity has an acceleration of about 9.8 meters per second squared. Now other examples of uniform acceleration could be a plane taken off, a train pulling out of a station, or a car on a motorway. Now these equations are sometimes termed as the SUVAT equations due to the possible terms that can be found in the equations. Displacement, S, initial velocity U, final velocity V, acceleration A, and time T. Now please remember that S stands for the displacement and not the speed. Now D would stand for distance travelled. Now we can derive the equations of motion from the motion graphs we previously discussed. So if we consider a velocity time graph for an object undergoing constant acceleration, the graph represents the motion of the object. Its initial velocity is u, and after time t, its final velocity is v. Now the, the graph is a straight line, so therefore the object's acceleration is constant. Now the gradient of the line is equal to acceleration, where our acceleration can be defined as the change in the y divided by the change in the x, or v minus u divided by t. Now rearranging this gives our first equation of motion, v equals u plus at. Our second equation can be derived as the displacement is given by the area under a velocity time graph. This shows that the object's average velocity is halfway between u, the starting velocity, and v, the final velocity. So the object's average velocity is calculated by average, averaging its initial and final velocities and it's given by u minus v divided by 2. So therefore the object's displacement is our shaded area, so therefore it's our rectangle, so we have our average velocity times by our time taken. So therefore we can say that our displacement is our average velocity which is u plus v divided by 2 times by t. Now from equations 1 and 2 we can derive equation 3. So if the first equation v equals u plus at and our second equation s equals u plus v divided by 2 all times by t. If we substitute v from equation 1 into equation 2 it gives us s equals u plus u plus at divided by 2 all times by t. So if we, t if we um, express that and we expand that outwards we can see it is 2ut over 2 plus at squared over 2. So so those two twos will cancel through and we get s equals ut plus a half at squared, our third equation. 
And our fourth equation can also be derived from equations 1 and 2. So we can substitute time from equation 1, v equals u plus at, into equation 2, s equals u plus v over 2 times by t. So we can get s equals u plus v divided by 2 plus uh, v plus u over a. So this rearranges to give 2as is equal to u plus v times by v minus u. So at this point, we can say 2as is equal to v squared minus u squared. So we can rearrange that to give v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So we can say we've got the following equations of motion. v equals u plus at, s equals u plus v over 2 all times by t, s equals ut plus a half at squared, and v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Now any equation can be solved if three of the variables are given in the question. So what you should do is write down all the variables you have and the one you are asked to find and then see which equation you can use. But remember, these equations can only be used for motion with uniform acceleration. So to answer questions with the equations of motion correctly, you should carry out the following steps. The first step should be to write out the variables which are known in the question. The second step will be to select the correct motion equation and there should only be one unknown variable in the equation chosen. Step three is to place the numbers into the equation, remember to ensure the units are in the correct form, then simplify and rearrange the equation as needed, and then step four, calculate an answer and place in the correct units with the correct significant figures. Always remember the assumption that this can only occur when the acceleration is constant and with a non-zero velocity. So let's have a look at an example question. A student investigates terminal velocity by dropping modeling, uh, balls of modeling clay in liquid. For a particular ball she makes the following measurements. The initial velocity is 0.035 meters per second, the final velocity is 0.013 meters per second and the distance over which the velocity changes is 0.30 meters. What is the average acceleration of the ball during the journey? So the first thing is to write out the different variables which are known in the equation in the question, so S, U, V, A and T. You then select the correct equation where there should only be one unknown variable in the equation chosen, so it's v squared minus u squared equals 2as. We then substitute our numbers into the equation, ensuring in the correct units and in the correct form. Then we simplify and rearrange the equation as needed. So we can say a equals minus 0.122331 over 0.6. So a is therefore equal to minus 0.203885. We can then write our answer with the correct units and the correct significant figures. So a is equal to minus 0.20 meters per second squared. So our negative acceleration means that the object is decelerating and slowing down. So let's have a look at this again. A driver of a vehicle traveling at a speed of 30 meters per second on a motorway breaks sharply to a standstill in a distance of 100 meters. Calculate the deceleration of the vehicle. So firstly, write out the variables which are known in the equation, S, U, V, A, and T. Then select the correct motion equation. Once again, there should only be one unknown variable in the equation chosen. So V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. We then place the numbers into the equation. Remember that the units are in the correct form. We then simplify and rearrange the equation as needed. So we get a is going to be equal to minus 30 squared over 2 times by 100. We then calculate our answer and we place the correct units with the correct significant figures. So a is equal to minus 4.5 meters per second squared. Again, remember a negative means the objects accelerate in the opposite direction to the velocity. There's deceleration. Remember, our assumption is that the acceleration is constant, which is always the case when we use our SUVAT equations. So our equations for uniform acceleration are as follows. V equals u plus at. S equals u plus v all over 2 all times by t. S equals ut plus a half at squared and v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to distinguish between u and v, calculate the displacement of an object moving with uniform acceleration, and then explain what else we need to know to calculate the acceleration of an object if we know its displacement in a given time. So thank you very much for watching this lesson, which is a motion in a straight line, which is the mechanics topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.